testimony or word you want to share? Anything? If not, I don't. I can't speak for anybody else. I don't know how God works with anybody else. I have a message. Yeah, Brother Bob preached that for this morning. <laughs> But that's all right, because that was getting out of the plan. But when I went home, God gave me some other thoughts, and I looked up some things, and I marked down some things, and I don't know where we're going to go. That's up to him. You know, it's the Holy Spirit who is the teacher. It's the Holy Spirit who's the one who comes and opens the word to us. So if we depend on him, if I'm obedient to him, and you open your hearts and minds to him, we'll all get something from him. Now, just a couple thoughts I wanted to share with you before we even get into the message. I was listening to those songs. And, and, you know, at this time of year, we sing all those songs about the Christ child and the baby Jesus. And, you know, it's at this time of year, you can give a lot, a lot, a lot of lost people in church. And I'm just sitting there thinking, I don't think they associate that baby that was in that manger with that one that went to the cross. And with the one that rose from that tomb and the one who now sits on the right hand of the Father. But if we get into the Bible, what it says is, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and without Him was not anything made that was made. That's God. And it goes on later, it says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That was that baby that was in that manger. We as Christians need to take this opportunity to show them that baby that was in that manger is that one who went to that cross, is the one who comes up from that tomb. Is the one who now sits on the right hand of the Father. Is the one who created everything. Is the one who is everything. I think it's easy for the lost world to disassociate that baby from everything else. And I think we as Christians have a responsibility to show them who that baby is. Who that baby grew up to be. This is one of the greatest opportunities that we as Christians ever get because it's at Christmas time, as I said. You can get lost people to come to church. You can get lost people to at least listen to you a little bit. The major scenes are out there and around. They're getting fewer and fewer, and it's getting harder and harder to be allowed to put them out. But we still have freedom of speech in this country, and as long as we got it, we need to use it for the glory of God. <laughs> That's not the matter. That was just a thought I had. If we could just reverence the Lord, I'd like to have prayer. Father, I thank you, God, for this privilege and this opportunity to stand. Lord, I pray as we open your word that you would be the one to speak, Lord, that you would help me to stay out of it. Lord, and let you to be the one to deliver this message. Open our hearts, open our minds, give us that, that, that you would have us to have, Lord, that is needful for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, at Christmas time, we know how the world is. It's all about the hubbub and the tree and the, the bells and, and all the festivity and the food and, and family and gifts and all that stuff. But I think sometimes we as Christians, too, get a little too caught up in that and forget what this is supposed to really be about. It, it's to celebrate that Christ came to give himself for us. And it's easy to get caught up, and it's easy to forget. And i, I got to be real honest with you. I get a little jaded sometimes. Sometimes I think I don't even want anything to do with Christmas. Uh, it, it's just become something other than what it was intended to be, something other than what it should be. But the Lord blessed me and woke me at the same time this morning. When I came up here to take that communion, the Lord got all over me. And that's what Christmas is all about. That spirit of the Lord indwelling you. And that's a gift. We all want gifts at Christmas. We all want to give gifts at Christmas. Gifts are such a big part of Christmas that we'll go out and we'll max out our credit cards. We'll go into debt and we'll take the rest of the year to pay off that debt and then we'll do it all over again. It's become so much about gifts. Well, let me read you something here. Just one little <coughs> scripture. This is in, we're going to be jumping around a lot, so... If you don't want to flip to these, that's all right. This is in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, Wherefore he, he saith, when he ascended up on high, 
He led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. We all like gifts. Well, Christ gave us some gifts. Christ gave us some gifts that couldn't be bought with money. You can max out every credit card that you could get your hands on and you couldn't buy the gifts that Christ gave us. I want to go over to the, the book of Isaiah in chapter 61. I just want to read a little bit here of some of the gifts that Christ gave us. And I think it behooves us at this time of year to stop and realize what happened after that baby came and after he grew up and went through everything that he went through to give us what he gave us. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, this is the prophet speaking about the Lord. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. This is just a small list of some of the gifts that the Lord has given us. And when I stop and when I read this, I love this part up here where he says, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. You know, there was a time when I was locked in Satan's prison. There was a time when I was bound in sin shackles, but the Lord came and he offered me a way out. And when I accepted him, and when I accepted his sacrifice and he applied that blood to my heart, that prison door swung open and it was changed first off. And he set me free. And there's no way that when I think of Christmas anymore, I can't think of this because this is what Christmas is to me. This is the gift that Christ has given me. And you just read these other things in here. You go and you read throughout the Word. He came to give us all these wonderful things. He's not just a baby laying in a major that came to give us a holiday, to give us an excuse to get off work or to have a meal or to get together with family. He came to give us all these things. These are the gifts that matter. These are the gifts that count. I, I can't tell you how much I love this. I, I don't know about you, but I was a sinful, wretched, awful person. I was wrapped up in sin. I was bound by sin. Satan had a hold of me, but Jesus didn't care. He came and he looked on me and he loved me anyway. And, and he shed his blood for me and he set me free. He broke those chains that once bound me and, and he lifted me up out of that horrible pit and he set me on the rock. And then he started doing all these other things for me. He gave me the spirit of joy. He gave me beauty for ashes. He comforted me when I was born. And he still does that to this day. When I'm down and when I'm out, he's right there to cradle me. When I get too tired that I can't walk, he'll pick me up and he'll carry me. These are the kind of gifts that we need to be seeking after at Christmas time. Not some pretty collar box wrapped up and stuck under a tree. These are the kind of gifts that are offered to you. And I'm going to tell you something. If you ain't enjoying these gifts to their fullest extent, well, you're missing out. If you're a born-again child of God, they are available to you. And all you've got to do is receive them. Because he died and he gave himself so that you could have these things. And it wasn't no mistake. He knew what he was doing when he came. Let me read you something else here. <laughs> This is over in the book of Matthew in chapter 20, verses 18 and 19. This is Christ speaking when he went before Pilate. He knew what was going on. He knew what was going to happen. He knew he was on trial for his life. He knew that that trial was going to go in a bad way against him, and he was going to end up on that cross. He knew that. He knew that before he ever left heaven. But I want to read you this. Verses 18 and 19 of chapter 20 of Matthew. This is Christ speaking. He said, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was going to go through. He knew the pain and the suffering and the anguish that he was going to have to endure. He knew that he was going to be betrayed. He knew that the ones who had walked with him and been closest to him were going to turn their back on him. But he looked down through time and he saw me. And he said, I'm going to do that because I love him. 
I'm going to do that because he needs a savior and I'm the only one that can do that. I'm going to do that because if I don't do that, he's going to end up in hell. And I love him too much to let that happen to him. That's the gift that he gave to me and that's the gift that he gave to you. And I got to say it again and I'll probably say it a couple times. If you're not enjoying that to the fullest extent that you can enjoy it, well, you're missing out. And you're not getting what Christ has for you. And it is available to you. And there's no big, long ceremony you got to go through. And there's no list of do's and don'ts you've got to do. All you got to do is accept that sacrifice. All you got to do is turn your heart and your life over to him. And that is your gift. If I went out tomorrow and I bought you a Christmas present and I wrapped it up and I stuck it under the tree and said that's yours, if you never open it, it ain't going to do you a bit of good. Amen. That's what Christ has done for you. Right. He's purchased you a gift. But if you don't take it and you don't receive it and you don't open it, it's not going to do you a bit of good. I, I talked a little bit about how we get it so into gifts and, and all that stuff. And we put all this money into it and we max out our credit card. And it's just mind-boggling what people will do at this time of year. But as I said, Christ gave a whole lot more. And I want to read you just a little bit of that. And this, you'll recognize this scripture if you were here this morning. <laughs> this is in the book of Isaiah in chapter 53. And this is talking about the Lord in some uh, of what he went through, just some of what he went through. I don't think our human minds can comprehend everything that he went through. Not only the physical torture and the physical beating that he went through, but the pain and the emotional suffering and anguish that he had to go through. It, the Bible says that in the garden he was in such anguish that his sweat became as great drops of blood. Uh, can you imagine that? Being that downtrodden and then that heartbroken and that anguish that, that your sweat would become as great drops of blood. I don't think we can fathom what he did for us. You know, we got this picture of Christ hanging on the cross with the nails and, and the crown of thorns and some stripes on him and, and the spear at his side. And that's bad enough. But I don't even think that scratches the surface of what he paid to give you the gift that he has for you. I think we need to get a hold of this and we need to understand what he gave for you. And you've probably heard this. You may have even said this. I've said it and I've heard it, but I believe it from the bottom of my heart. Had you been the only one that would have ever accepted that gift, I believe without any doubt in my heart, mind, or soul that he would have still done it Amen. for you. Amen. If that don't do something to you, We're so unworthy. We're so undeserving that God, the creator of the universe, the everything, the all in all, as I quoted to you, the word, whom without him nothing that was made could have been made, became flesh, took on this, and suffered beyond anything that I can explain to you, beyond anything I believe you can imagine, for you, to save your soul from hell. But if that wasn't enough, you get all these other benefits with it. Some of the stuff that I read, that the, the joy that he will give you, the beauty for ashes that he will give you, the comfort that he will give you, the strength that he will give you, the things he does for you in your life every day that most of the time we don't even realize and recognize and, and appreciate all these things he does for us. That's what Christmas is. That's what Christmas is all about. Let me read you this. Isaiah chapter 53. And I'm going to break down at verse 3. And this is talking about the Lord. And as I said, if you were here this morning, you recognize this scripture. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. And that ain't just talking about physical healing. That's a healing 
That, that no doctor can touch. That's a healing that no salve can soothe. That's a healing that no pill can fix. That's a spiritual healing. Amen. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of all of us. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He's brought it as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Now listen to this. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, but thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. You can go ahead and read the rest of that. I, I want to just really think about this. It was pleasing to him. It says it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased him to go through all these things, all this torture and suffering and anguish and, and rejection and betrayal and everything that he went through. It pleased him to do that because of us, because of you. I think when I preached here a couple weeks ago, I may have said this. There's scripture that says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. You can't convince me there's joy in hanging on the cross. You can't convince me there's joy in getting beat till the flesh is ripped off your body. You can't convince me there's joy in being betrayed by those who were your closest, trusted, most loved. But the joy was on the other side. The joy was that what he would complete what he would do would purchase salvation for all of us. It would make a way that we wouldn't have to go to hell. It would make a way that we could spend eternity in heaven in his presence. That was the joy that was set before him. That's why this says it pleased him to bruise him because of what it would give to us. The gift that it would bring to us. That's what this is all about. As I said, I, I, I've gotten a little jaded over the years and gotten a little frustrated and aggravated and upset at what Christmas has become. But Christmas can only become to me what I let it become in my heart. If I let the world influence me, that's my fault. If I let all the, the money stuff about it influence me, that's my fault. If I let anything other than Christ be the center of Christmas for me, that's my fault. But it's not hard to do. Because we live in a wicked and an evil and a sinful world. And we've got to be on our toes because our adversary walks about seeking to be made about. If he can pull you in with Christmas, he'll pull you in with Christmas. Whatever it takes to get you sidetracked and to get your mind off of Christ and to get your heart away from where it ought to be, he's going to do that. Yeah. And as I said, it's not hard to get it when you see all that and you're in the midst of all that and it's going on around you every day and every day and every day. It's not hard to get that way. But Christ gave us these gifts. And one of those gifts is that any time I need him, I can call out to him. And he can take all that away from me. He can take that troubled mind away from me and give me peace. He can take all that evil influence away from me and fill me with the good things of God. But it's my choice and I have to go after them. I have to seek after them. I have to accept them. They are mine, but I have got to do what I have got to do. He's not just going to force it on me. It is up to me. And we as Christians have got to get our minds and our hearts in the right place. And we as Christians have not got to get to a point where we don't let this world push in on us and crowd in on us and push Christ out of Christmas and push Christ out of our heart and push Christ out of our mind. You know, Satan would love nothing better than if I got so bitter about Christmas 
that, that I look like and act like an old Scrooge or something like that. And then the lost out in the world says, well, there's a Christian for you. And what kind of a witness and what kind of a testimony would that be for Christ if I were to get like that? I, I got to say this again, and I got to thank the Lord that he blessed me and woke me both here this morning. Sometimes we need to go to Wilkins. Put us back on the right road. Put us back on the right way of thinking. I wore... I don't know if you all saw it. This is one of those uh, spikes. Like Christ, it's a small one, but like Christ was nailed to the cross with. And I wore the cross today because as I got to thinking... Christmas ain't about that baby laying in a manger. That's how he chose to come because that's how it had to be done. He had to come in flesh, and he had to live the life of a human being here on this planet. But that's not what it's about. And I wore these because I wanted to, to make this comparison. He ain't in there anymore. He ain't on here anymore. He ain't in that tomb anymore. I, I said this this morning, all those are empty, but I'm full. Because now he's in here. Amen. This is where we've got to focus our attention. This is where we as Christians have got to look when it comes to Christmas. This is where our sights have to be set. I, I think even as Christmas, some Christians sometimes, we disassociate that baby from that one who went to the cross and rose from the tomb and, and now sits on the right hand of the Father. I think it's easy to disassociate all of that. Mm -hmm. But you can't have one without the other. Right. Had he come as a baby, what good would that be if that's all that there ever was? Right. You know, and if... He was just that, that man hanging on the cross. That, that wouldn't do you any good either. Right. Or if he stayed in that tomb, that wouldn't do you any good either. It takes it all. It took it all. It was the perfect plan of God. That's what Christmas is. It's the perfect plan of God. To bring salvation to a people who don't deserve salvation. To bring salvation to a people that, that were bound in sin, that were locked up in sin's prison, that, that were doomed to a devil's hell, that had no chance and no hope and no way of escape other than should he come and give himself for us. That's what Christmas is. That, that's what it's all about. That, that's really all I know. I, as I said, I didn't know where we were going. <laughs> I feel that's what the Lord had wanted me to Deliver to you, so I deliver to you, and what you do with it, that's between you and him now. That's on you. I, I do got to say, though, that I thank him, that he set me free. I'll never be able to thank him enough. There are words. Anybody 